Berlin, 1945. The walls echo with impending doom, and deep beneath the rubble, the most infamous man of the 20th century spends his last days. As the world above moved to the rhythm of war's final beats, Adolf Hitler faced his ultimate moments of reckoning. For many of us, understanding these final moments is more than just a historical pursuit. It's a journey into the psyche of a man whose shadow still looms large over modern history. Welcome to Wild History. In the heart of a Berlin torn apart by war, a descent began. It wasn't just a physical descent, though that was part of it. It was a descent into desperation, into isolation, and perhaps into madness. Above ground, the once proud German capital bore the scars of relentless Allied bombing. Smoke tendrils wound their way upwards, framed by charred remnants of buildings that had once been the jewels of European architecture. The sounds of distant artillery, the scream of dive bombers, and the ever-present rumble of tank tracks became the city's haunting lullaby. But below this chaotic symphony, far from the sky's wrath, lay the Führerbunker, a sanctuary or a tomb. For Hitler and his inner circle, it was increasingly difficult to tell. Joined by his most loyal officers and staff, including the likes of Martin Bormann, Eva Braun, and Joseph Goebbels, this place transformed from a mere bunker to the epicenter of Nazi resistance. Life in the bunker was an uncanny juxtaposition. While Berliners above faced starvation and fear, below, in the dimly lit corridors, high-ranking officials clung to the delusion of victory. Every day, Hitler held military conferences in his study, poring over maps, desperately seeking a strategy for victory. But as weeks turned into months, even the Führer rarely ventured out, limiting himself to short strolls in the Chancellery Garden with his dog, Blondie. The atmosphere grew increasingly stifling, punctuated by frequent air raids and the ever-present dread of impending defeat. The air was thick, both with tension and the very real physical heaviness of recycled oxygen and the exhaust from underground generators. It was a world away from the world, a capsule of time where reality seemed twisted. Among these dark corridors and rooms, Eva Braun, Hitler's longtime companion, tried to maintain an atmosphere of normalcy. She hosted small dinners, dressed elegantly as if refusing to let the bunker's oppressive atmosphere defeat her spirit. There was even a birthday celebration for Hitler on April 20th, a surreal occasion given the circumstances. But the bunker unveiled a Hitler coming undone, both mentally and physically. Imagine the weight of the world upon your shoulders, as every decision could spell doom for your nation. Now amplify that a hundredfold. This was Hitler's world. His once sharp gaze dulled, replaced by a hollow, far-off look. Reports from the inner circle painted a portrait of a man increasingly plagued by paranoia. Trust, a fleeting resource, evaporated from his inner circle. His generals, once lauded war heroes, became objects of his ire and distrust. Hitler began to see betrayal everywhere, even amongst his most loyal confidants. Conversations in the claustrophobic halls of the Führerbunker were punctuated with shouts of treason and deception. And then there was his health. Whispers abound about Hitler's trembling hands, possibly Parkinson's, and his slurred speech. The once robust orator now needed aid to steady himself. Sleep eluded him, and the lines on his face deepened, carved by the pressure of impending defeat. By mid-April, the nightmare scenario for the Third Reich had become a reality. The Red Army had begun its final assault on Berlin. Hitler's response? A display of twisted bravado. On his 56th birthday, he emerged from his underground lair to award the Iron Cross to young members of the Hitler Youth amidst the ruins of the Reich Chancellery. But even this couldn't shroud the truth. Soviet artillery was already pounding the heart of the city. Yet even in his crumbling state, Hitler clung to delusions of a Nazi victory. Reality became distorted. Map sessions became surreal as he moved imaginary armies across Europe planning grand counterattacks with divisions that existed only in his mind. A complete nervous breakdown. Key Nazi figures like Himmler sought surreptitious negotiations with the Allies, actions which Hitler deemed as treachery. Prominent figures, including Field Marshal Robert Ritter von Grein and test pilot Hanna Reich, were summoned, not for military strategies, 
but for a final demonstration of loyalty. Desperation crept in. Hitler placed all his hopes on units commanded by Waffen SS General Felix Steiner. But when news broke that Steiner's forces remained stagnant and the Red Army tanks had reached the outskirts of Berlin, Hitler's composure shattered. Amidst tearful rage, he conceded, for the first time, that the war was lost. When the situation got completely out of hand, the Führer made a fateful decision. Hitler chose to stay in Berlin. Not in some distant safe house or an escape route to another country, but right there, at the heart of it all. It was a decision that baffled many. Was it stubbornness, courage, or a refusal to accept the imminent reality? Well, experts suggest Hitler might have just accepted his fate. And in those very corridors of the bunker, Hitler penned his last will and political testament. <sighs> Came the day that would forever mark itself in the annals of history. Hitler's alleged death. It was one of the most intensely scrutinized, debated, and mythologized events of the 20th century. The mainstream narrative goes like this. On April 29, 1945, a peculiar sense of intimacy blossomed. Hitler and Eva Braun, his longtime companion, decided to tie the knot. The bunker's grim atmosphere played host to their hasty wedding, a stark contrast to any traditional joyous occasion. It was as if amidst the chaos, there was an urge to grab hold of some semblance of normalcy. But on April 30th, as Soviet troops closed in on the city, Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun, his new bride of just one day, took their own lives in the underground shelter. Official reports state that Hitler consumed a cyanide pill and shot himself simultaneously, while Braun chose the poison alone. But for a figure as polarizing and influential as Hitler, even death couldn't be simple or uncontroversial. Almost immediately, alternative theories began to emerge. Did Hitler truly die in the bunker? Or did he escape, living out his days in secrecy? One popular theory suggests that Hitler didn't die in the bunker at all. Instead, he and a few of his closest aides were supposedly smuggled out of Germany, fleeing to the warm embrace of South America, possibly Argentina. This theory was fueled by the fact that many Nazis did, in fact, escape to South America after the war. Another theory postulates that the Soviets, upon discovering Hitler's body, decided to keep it a secret to maintain an air of uncertainty in the West. This line of thought was further bolstered when, in the early 1960s, the KGB reportedly unearthed and cremated a body believed to be Hitler's, fearing that the burial site might become a neo-Nazi shrine. So why, with such a significant event, is there so much mystery? It's in part because the world's collective inability to reconcile with the idea that a man responsible for the death of millions could die a quiet death in a bunker. We as humans seek grand narratives, endings that match the scale of the life lived, especially one as tumultuous and impactful as Hitler's. However, the truth, as noted by most historians, is far less sensational. Decades of research combined with the testimony of those present in the bunker paint a clear picture of Hitler's final days and his eventual suicide. <laughs>